Hey, Keisha here again. So now we're going to talk about how we actually take a biologically focused compost. We're going to take our microbes and turn it from a, um, a solid product into a liquid amendment. And so often when we're doing regenerative work, we're working with farmers. Um, biologically focused compost takes extra water. It takes extra time. There's a lot more care that goes into making it, especially with the microscope work. And so it tends to be a more expensive product. But because it's got so much life in it, you're going to use much less. And so often when we're working with our clients, when we're you know, working on our consulting jobs, we're taking that compost and we're turning it into an extract or a compost tea and then applying that. So I'm going to go through some different ways from the very simple up to different machines that we use to do this work. Um, honestly, as you get bigger, as you scale up and there are the machines, you know, um, that we need present on the farm, it, it gets a lot easier to do. Um, but let's just start out with the most simple way to go about it. I've got some photos here. You can see these folks are making compost extract by hand. Um, this is a very low tech procedure. They're actually using a uh, paint strainer bag. There's compost tea bags too that have a much smaller mesh to put through these machines with tighter openings. But um, we can apply compost extract compost tea with a watering can. Um, that's going to be the simplest way to go about it. It's got a nice open hole, so all those microorganisms are going to flow through without clogging anything up. Um, and so, you know, you can just sit down with your compost. You put a few handfuls in a bag, and you massage it into that water for a few minutes. You're going to instantly see the water start to change colors. The darker it is, that's going to be a really good sign. Um, and then, you know, in this photo, we've got our, uh, our watering cans. So we all just, you know, dumped the water into the watering cans, make sure we stir it up. So the sediment that goes to the bottom, that's got all the microbes in it, stays in solution. And then we just go around the garden, pouring it where we need to. Um, there's also, you can use a sump pump and a hose to spray things out. Um, different pumps are going to damage microorganisms in different ways, but, um, we're not going to get too much into that today. Um, I want to show you here, say you have a lot of land and a lot of compost that you need to extract. Um, and doing it by hand is going to be cost prohibitive because it's so laborious. Um, there are machines out there. There's many different extract machines that have been made. Um, we like to use this one. And basically, it's, it's forcing air through the bag and forcing those microorganisms off the compost into the water. Um, this machine, it's made by Greater Earth Organics, um, and it's gonna produce about 175 gallons or two, 275. I think it depends on the size of the tank. They have two units, um, but it, it produces it really quickly. In about 30 minutes, your tank is filled with compost extract and it can be sprayed out onto, um, onto the soil or injected. So let me show you the machine that we use. Um, this is the machine that we actually own and use for our applications with our clients. And that's a 550 gallon conical tank right there. You can see on the back, it's got, um, we've got our blowers, we've got aeration on this machine. So once we get the extract into it, it's gonna be bubbling the whole time, keeping everything in solution like I talked about before. Um, you can see the two hose reels right there. Um, those are 350 feet of length, so we can go out into landscape or into fields, and you know we can get quite a distance away from the machine. Um, now we've got a really nice nozzle head on there for spraying compost extracts and teas, um, and we've also got an injection unit. And that injection bar can you push it into the ground, so you're able to actually work with perennials, you know, trees, shrubs, things of that nature that you're not able to dig up. And you're able to deliver those microorganisms right to the root zone, which we find to be incredibly effective with working with compaction and um, you know, really stressed trees and plants. Um, now let's go forward and look at this is actually a system from uh, a large-scale farm that we work with these guys actually grow uh, fig trees and this is an inline injection unit so what they can do is they can take a tank and plug it into here and these will do this system will deliver the microorganisms right there to each tree so they're able to put um, inject into their drip lines and their um, above ground spray systems This is another tank that we have helped a farmer retrofit to use for um, injecting into their pivot system. So um, they're gonna, this was a tank that they used to use before for organic nutrients. 
and we just got in there and made sure that we cleaned it out really really well and you know we looked at their pumps to make sure everything was going to flow and this is a nice system for them they actually use the same extractor that we use and they just you know they get one batch going this tank goes out and injects into the pivots and then it comes back and picks up more um, compost extract to deliver again um, these farmers are using compost extracts every single time they water and they're seeing a lot of really great results by doing that. Now here again is very similar machine to ours. You can see in the background here, um, it's, it's the same extraction unit that we use with, um, with our company, only they've got that lifted up. So instead of having to pump it into a tank, they can actually gravity feed it into a tank. That's gonna, it's gonna be less damage to the microorganisms and it's also a lot easier for them to clean up. So what I'm trying to show you here is there's a lot of ways to go about doing this. And you know, a lot of the machines I'm showing you here are you know, very expensive. Um, one, of these, uh, one of these extractors is costing around $5,000, I think. And you know, some of these spray tanks are upwards of 20,000 to buy. Um, but there are a lot of other ways to go about it uh, if you don't have the money or the farmer you know doesn't quite have the machinery yet that's necessary to do the work um, like i said we could use the method of just you know pouring it with a watering can um, there's also backpack sprayers um, again you know when we're talking about backpack sprayers and things like this, there's tiny little spaces that can really, really easily get clogged up by the particulate that's in that compost. Um, so what you're going to want to do in those cases is, you know, go through all of the parts of the backpack sprayer and make sure you've pulled out the filter so it's as wide open as possible. Now I've seen people use the hand crank backpack sprayers. They also have um, DeWalt, I believe. Is it DeWalt? makes a backpack sprayer that um, it's it's electric it's a little bit heavy but it has nice wide open openings it's easy to clean and it's a little bit faster than a hand crank pump would be um, and then you know we just we might want to talk about like you know, why why would we even spray this compost extract and tea out like what kind of results are we seeing so um, with the strawberry growers that was my first example here um, they're seeing a lot more flower and fruit production um, actually on the non-organic side of the fence where they're spraying the compost extracts, they're seeing much, much bigger strawberries. And it's a lot of what we talked about in the segment with um, bioremediation, right? You've got a lot of these salts in the ground that maybe the plants aren't able to easily take up. But once these microorganisms get a hold of them and start to break them down, those nutrients actually become more available for the plant. Now, another thing is, when the fungi in this compost extract, in the compost that gets moved to the compost extract, gets into the soil, it's actually going to act like lime. It's going to flocculate the soil. It's going to open it up. That fungi is going to start to build um, aggregation. The bacteria and fungi both work together to rope in, you know, all of these sand, silts, clays, inorganic fertilizers, all these different compounds. Um, they begin to pull them together, rope them together, and make these spaces in the ground. So often one of the first things that farmers are going to report when they're working with this kind of product is um, a soil that's going to accept the water better and hold that water better. Um, also, we're going to see a, a, a resilience in the plants. Often people are reporting back quite quickly that the plants are much darker, deeper green, and that they're growing much more vigorously. So, you know, the point of this is to use this liquid amendment um, in a way that's, you know, more economical for the farmer to, and we use it repeatedly, right? So it's not a one and done um, treatment. It's something that they're doing over and over again. And what's happening is they're seeding this microbial life into their soil. And they're also um, continuing to treat that microbe life as if it is, you know, like a farm animal. So as they're slowly building this underground ecosystem of microbes, um, those microbes are starting to serve 
that plant relationship. So there's a lot of different benefits that we're going to see from this over time, and it just continues to build. Uh, you know, oftentimes when we're working with farmers, we start with trials so that they can see, you know, and they're not just blindly going in and making all these changes based off of our word alone. So a lot of the times we come in with inadequate equipment, um, just doing our best. They're seeing results, and then slowly over time, we're building into buying these more expensive units so that they can, you know, more effectively deliver these microbes out. All right. Happy microbe farming, everybody. Bye-bye.